It really is. I didn't even have your phone number. <laughs> so for everybody listening, Kate and I know each other. <laughs> yes. We um we met uh online I think first. I think we were doing some sort of a chat. Was it the romancing the rock maybe page Probably, or something? Yeah, yeah. And I said, I'm from Lewisport and you came back Lewisport. I was so excited. It seems like everybody lives in St. John's, right? Right. And uh, and I was too. <laughs> because, yeah, everybody lives in St. John's. Or, you know, I think Candace and Janice were living on the West Coast. So there's all this community of writers, and uh, but we don't live near each other. So we, uh, we get together for coffee when we both need uh, to. Every now and then it just hits me. It's like, oh, I got to talk to somebody. I want to get in touch with Kate. We'll have coffee. Because we, yeah, it's nice to talk to somebody who understands what you're going through, right? Exactly. And and yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, let's talk about let's let's start from the beginning because here we are chatting. And I love that you said this morning. Can I ask you questions too? Because yeah, let's just have a conversation and not do this. Oh yeah, uh, it's whole... so much more comfortable than just an interview, right? Right, right. So, uh, but anyway. Um, so, but we still have to start with questions to get this rolling. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So you have been writing for how long? Uh, well, I've been writing my whole life. I right. didn't. Well, okay. I Some started backup. a lot of novels and got hung up on trying to perfect first chapters and things like that uh, all through my 20s. I didn't actually finish a novel until, well, I started it November 2010. So I guess I finished 2011 finished drafting in 2011. Um, so I guess I've been a novelist for that long. Right. Okay. But, uh, you know, I picked at stories, and I always wanted to be a storyteller before that, but my perfectionism kind of kept me hung up and not producing anything until then. Yeah, I had a, I had a similar thing. I think that's common, is, is, especially when you're not quite, you're not, you don't know. Right, you're yeah, trying for to sure. you're trying to write this perfect book, and you don't realize that uh, writers don't usually, or often. I mean, there may be some, but uh, not that I'm aware of. They, they write the draft, yes, and then they go back and and uh, start their rewrites, and and that usually for me, and I don't know if this is the same for you, but same that's you. the that's the work. I mean, oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, and that's why, I mean, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, absolutely changed my life because um, for anyone who's not familiar with that, it's an online event where you try to write 50,000 words of a novel in 30 days. And that was the first time that I ever just had to keep pushing ahead. And instead of stopping and revising my ideas at the end of the first chapter and changing it and trying to perfect it, I just had to finish the draft. And that's when I got the experience with finishing a draft reading over it, then deciding what needed to change and looking at the story as a whole. And it changed everything. It changed the speed of my writing. It changed my ability to complete a book. And it was fantastic. You know, that's my experience as well. My first book was, yeah. and actually I've written three during NaNoWriMo now. And not all my books are written under NaNoWriMo, but... Uh, they're written by, in the same token. Like I will sit down and say, okay, I'm just going to write this thing until I'm done and uh, yes. set a goal. Usually I do do it within a month. That's usually my goal. And yes. uh, so it's the same. It may not be a calendar month. It might be mid-April when I start and I'll say I'm going to finish it by the 15th of May. But right. it's the same idea. Yeah, my first book came out of a NaNoWriMo um, um, challenge. And uh, yes. so, yeah. yeah, yeah, November, it's coming. Yes, it's and coming. I, and, and I still do it. And even though, I mean, the suggested pace for NaNoWriMo is, what, 1,667 words per day average? Right. And that's, I mean, that's a lot less than I normally write on a writing day now that I'm doing it professionally. But at the same time, I still like to participate because it's just so exciting and fun. And there's this whole community of writers and everybody's doing it at the same time. And it's, yeah, it's fantastic. I, I do it too. And uh, what I find, what I do in NaNoWriMo now is I write something that I don't normally write. I write something that oh. I think maybe I won't publish. And you know yes. what happens is I, something comes out of it and I go, okay, I will eventually publish this. I don't know when and yeah. I don't know how, but I have something else 
uh, last year I wrote a romance and um, it's sitting there. It's completed. Like, you know, yeah. and, well, it's more than draft now. I've done some work with it. Um, yeah. But I think I might do the second a series. So I think this Dan O'Reilly might be part two of another book, another romance. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I, would, I would love to do that. And I keep saying that I'm going to do that, but I'll just sort of, you know, make that a break from, you know, the, the stuff that I'm under pressure to write and right. do something completely different just for fun, just to get the fun back into the writing. And then I end up with deadlines and I have to work on something else, but I'm going to do that. If yeah. not this year, definitely next year. Yeah. And, and well, see, I've had the luxury of being able to uh, play around because I haven't been um, actively publishing for a few years. So I've, I've got four yeah. books published, but they have, there hasn't been any, Rhythm and rhyme. I keep getting distracted by other work, but uh, well, well, it's so easy, right? <laughs> there are so many ideas out there, and they're so pretty and shiny. It, it's and been you've got so much other stuff going on. I have. I, this is my turning point, though. I have um, this year turned around, um, finished up some big projects that were not writing related, and uh, committees I was on. I've resigned some things to clear up my time and space to focus 100% on writing books, um, writing the column for the paper, and writing in general. And all my volunteer work now is related to um, the literary industry. Uh, this program, you know, is about the arts, uh, the column in the paper. I, I volunteer with the Writers' Alliance and with the literary events and else. So that's where I'm focusing. It's like, this is it. This is about writing now, and uh, I'm ready to go. So I'm on that. And we are both included in a project together. We are. We are. I spoke to Kit Sora. I love her. I love her, what she's doing with her photography. And so, uh, yeah, we have, and you have, and I haven't read yours and you haven't read mine. Uh, no, I think everything's kind of top secret. I don't uh, know anything about what anyone has written. So did you do a flash fiction for the Kit Sora project? It's called the Artobiography. I think that's what it's called. I did. Okay. How many it words? 300 words. 300. I was kind of a last minute edition. They needed a few extra stories to fill it out. And uh, so Matthew, who was uh, in charge of the project, approached me and I said I would try. I didn't have a lot of confidence in my ability to write anything that short. But, uh, yeah, it was it was really fun. It was a good challenge. Yeah, and so for everybody listening, flash fiction is very short fiction. Uh, mine very was short. Very short. Mine was 250 words. You remember in school when you would get an assignment, um, you know, write something 500 words or 300 words, and you would struggle to get to the 500 mark? Well, once you become a writer, <laughs> it's the opposite. It's, it's a struggle. It totally is. I know you see these posts online and it's like, here's how to pad words for your essays. And I'm going, I don't want extra words. I write. I don't know how to cut words. I write everything and then I cut everything back. Like it's, it's constant. Yeah. I say I take 20 to 30 percent out sometimes that have. Well, my first book, for example, was 130,000 words when it was done, like when yeah. I drafted it. And when I published it, it was 99,000. Wow, that's pretty I, good. I basically took out the middle made a part one, made a part two, and then sort of went, she went to university and graduated. I took out her entire education career because it really wasn't relevant. It, it Right, and move. that's so important, right? Because especially in the middle, you don't want to bog it down with anything that's not moving the story forward. Right, and I was really happy no. I did it because I had her backstory in my mind, so I knew who she was really well, but did, mm -hmm. I, the reader didn't need to have that. So anyway, well, yeah, that's part yeah. of it, right? It's uh, Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, you as the author need to know, but often the reader doesn't need to know everything. Not the details, no. And so yeah. so that's good practice, but getting it down to 250 words and, and having a bit of a story arc and making it interesting and leaving the reader. And I find with these that most often the good flash fiction leaves you kind of going, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, mine you know. has a very ambiguous ending. <laughs> mine does too, and I and I yeah. think and and it's sort of more of I don't know if it's an ambiguous ending, but it's more of a what was that about? Like what just happened here? Which leaves um, some room for imagination for the reader to. Yeah, I think flash flash fiction is often kind of a jumping off point, right? I mean, it's, we right. plant the seed, but then it just sort of has to grow and expand in the reader's mind. 
Yeah, and what if uh, I've done some flash fiction in the past where, and I'm not real great at it, I still, I would like to do more of it, um, where we've had discussions on pieces of flash fiction and what we all got out of it was so completely different, uh, you know. Yeah. I thought they were doing this, and no, I, well, I thought they were going, you know, and I think they went there. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's yeah. fun to do, and I, uh, same as you, I just, uh, Matthew reached out because he needed a few more stories. And uh, and Matthew is Matthew LeDrew of Engine Books, which is a publisher in the province, a uh, small press uh, publisher here in the province. And uh, they do a lot of genre fiction. And uh, this uh, book is curated by Engine Books. So they're, they're releasing it mid-October, I think is what I was told. And we'll have all that information on the Facebook page. So, uh, yeah, and so you did the Kitsura flash fiction, and but usually you write urban fantasy. I write fantasy and urban fantasy under two different names. Okay, so you write under two different names. That's right, I forgot you had yes. the pen name. And yes. so tell us what urban fantasy is for somebody listening who doesn't know. Uh, easiest way to explain it, shorthand for someone who doesn't know, is urban fantasy tends to be uh, well, I mean, it's fantasy. It's it's not set strictly in the real world, but it is set in our world. Um, so if you're talking about high fantasy, you're talking about, you know, The Hobbit and alternate worlds and dragons and stuff. Urban right. fantasy is set in our world, um, not always in a big city, as the word urban implies, um, but it is set in our world, and there will be supernatural creatures. Often it's vampires, werewolves, uh, witches. Um, there could be magic, there could be all kinds of stuff happening, but that's the key thing is that it is set in our world. So it's like I'm sitting here in the living room and a vampire walks in. Right, <laughs> yes, suddenly you're in an urban <laughs> fantasy story. And that would be an adventure. So, yeah. Right. Right. So, um, and I've read your, you write under your own name. Do you care to share your pen name or should we not? Uh, yeah, well, I write the urban fantasy under the name Tana Frost. Tana Frost, and that's the yes. one I've read that series, and I love it. Yes. Uh, yeah, that one's I, been really fun to work on. Yeah, and and previous to that, and it's also geared for different audiences, right? Because I've read, I think, one or two of your books under your name, Kate Sparks, mm -hmm. and they seem to be maybe for a younger audience. They are. Those are, I say, mature young adults. Mature young adult. Yeah, They're because not. my girls yeah. who are teenagers uh, read those, yeah. and they love them. And I've read, I've read one of them. I forget, Into... Into Allurian? Allurian, yes. That, and, yeah, that one's under my name as well. That one is new adult. That one's a bit more mature. Okay. I've read that one, and then the kids have all the others, and I haven't read them all. i got to need more reading time. But I've read all of the Tanith Frost. That's a series. I absolutely love it. It's set in Newfoundland. and It is, yeah. And it's vampires and werewolves, basically. It, it, among other things. Among yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I never set out to write urban fantasy. I never really had a desire to write about vampires because I figured, you know, they've been done a lot and it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. But uh, I was out walking one day and suddenly had a, this character in my head and uh, she had a good enough story that I wasn't going to say no. So <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a really fun adventure and I have, I've loved being able to set the books here. Um, what you've done with vampires in this book and how you've approached it is very um, original and unique. I've, I've read a lot of vampire stuff. I have, I've read The Twilight even because I had teenagers when that all came out. I have older daughters. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've done all that. So when, when Twilight came out, then I read other vampire stuff around the same time because the books were always around the house, right, when you have teenagers that are into that. And I would oh, pick yeah. one up and read it. And I really enjoyed some of them are really well-written, great stories. And they, they all go Definitely. in different directions, right? There's very standard yes. vampire stuff where, you know, you, you know, you vampires out there, um, you know, just, you know, the garlic and the crosses. And it's all very um, what you would expect of a vampire story because Twilight veers with the sparkles and the, uh, you know, they're different. Right. And then yep. you, you do something different again, which I thought was very unique. I've never come across it before and, uh, and original with the vampires, which people will have to read the books to find out what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's part of the appeal for me in writing fantasy and urban fantasy is that 
you start with an idea, something that people are familiar with. I mean, most people, I think, know what a vampire is, essentially. 